why have I been making these videos? Videos like this and this and this. The reality is we don't always see ourselves or who we really are in the story. Now I had missed the most important revelation of this story until just a few weeks ago. This book changed my life then and in rereading it and thinking about it has changed my life now. That's the power of a good story. So why am I making these videos and why are you watching them? My name is Danielle Romero and thank you so much for being with me today on my channel researching my family's hidden history, questions of identity, and what does it mean to be an American? I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl. She's 12 years old, super curious, loved to read, and her favorite book was actually Anne of Green Gables. But one day everything changed. It was the day she picked up a book that would forever change the perspective of her life. That book was called To Kill a Mockingbird. The book by Harper Lee and it's also an incredible movie starring Gregory Peck in 1962. To Kill a Mockingbird is like a cherished memory from childhood. It's set in a quiet, unhurried, fictional town of Maycomb, Alabama, about a generation ago in the 1920s and 30s. And it unfolds the tale of a respected attorney named Atticus Finch and his two motherless children, his son Jem and his daughter Scout. I saw a lot of myself in Scout, the young white girl who narrates the story. But as the story unravels, it transitions into a place of genuine and terrifying realities. The first time I read this book, it was assigned reading in eighth grade, and I immediately felt a deep connection with Scout Finch. We shared similar experiences and personalities. Both of us had fathers who were attorneys men that were determined to protect those who could not protect themselves. We both had a sense of curiosity that couldn't be tamed. And for me, seeing myself reflected in Scout's char character was a really powerful experience for me as a young girl. And as I turned the pages, I saw myself in Scout Finch embracing her father Atticus's noble ideals of seeing beyond color and embracing our neighbors as equals. But little did I know that my own self-perception was about to shatter. And it all began when I embarked on a journey to uncover my own family's ancestry, a journey that would challenge everything I thought that I knew and the very way that I understood this book. Part of the story revolves around a young Black man whose name is Tom Robinson, who is unjustly accused of a crime against a white woman in town. And Atticus Finch is assigned to defend him. White folks defending Black folks at this time was dangerous, and maybe actually in the course of the story, a white man from town attacks Scout, his young daughter, just because her father defended Tom Robinson in court. But this story inspired me. Atticus Finch said, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. I wanted to be like Atticus. I wanted to be like Scout. There was a particular quote from Scout Finch that struck a chord deep within me. It's a time where these, the two kids are having a conversation alone, trying to understand the dynamics that are beginning to be realized involved in this court case. Her brother Jem is trying to figure out the four kinds of people in town. And he says, I've thought about it a lot lately, and I've got it figured out. There's four kinds of folk in Macomb County. There's the ordinary, ordinary kind like us. Think about it is, our kind of folks don't like the Cunninghams, and the Cunninghams don't like the Yules, and the Yules hate and despise the colored folks. And Scout replies to her brother, Nah, Jem, I think they're just one kind of folks. Folks. The, the simple yet profound words that Scout Finch spoke, now I had missed the most important revelation of this story until just a few weeks ago. This realization struck me like a thunderbolt. I had viewed myself through the lens of Scout Finch and Atticus Finch. I discovered that our place in the narrative of To Kill a Mockingbird was different than I had imagined. You see, during the time when To Kill a Mockingbird was set, my own family, I thought, would have been the Finches. But my family actually was considered Black in Jim Crow South, according to census records. I thought I was reading into this as Scout Finch. But the reality is we don't always see ourselves or who we really are in the story. In the 1920s and 30s, my family was listed as mulatto and black and Mexican. We weren't the Finches. We were the Robinsons. 
the echoes of Jem's words have rang my ears over the past couple weeks as I've been working through what am I doing on this channel? Why am I making these videos? I realized that my family's story was not unique. That so many of us fail to understand why our neighbors or even our own families are the way that they are. And for us, if you've watched, you know, the docuseries that kind of started my whole journey, it was wondering, you know, why, why did my mom's grandmother lie about her identity? Why didn't we really know? And as I began to understand the truth about where my family came from, a lot of other things about my family started to make more sense to me. We often fail to recognize the complex web of circumstances and experiences that shape individuals. As I dug deeper into my family story, I started to understand my grandmother more, and my mother more, and myself more. I realized that such a significant part of who we are is shaped by our upbringing and environment. So why am I making these videos telling you about the experiences of different groups coming to America or delving into these hidden histories? And why are you watching them? Whatever the reason is for you, I want to invite you to join me as we continue to unravel the threads of the past and turn them into something more beautiful. You know, as I begin this new chapter of my journey, you know, the first the first part was trying to understand, okay, who were we? Like, what was the truth? Now that I have the truth, I realize that there are so many other stories where the, the truth has yet to be told. People are really hungry to have conversations that are not um, politically framed. You know, I get a lot of people that make assumptions that I'm on this side of the political aisle or I'm on this side of the political aisle. And the reality is I... I resoundly reject both sides. I'm really unhappy with the way that um, these conversations are politicized. And it always seems that the point of having these conversations in the United States anyway is to get a leg up on um, you know, your political enemy. And I, I would just love this channel to be a place where we can set that stuff aside and open our hearts up and allow time to reflect, kind of look back on the past without um, an agenda. This book changed my life then, and in rereading it and thinking about it has changed my life now. That's the power of a good story.